Hello and welcome to another Rocky's Bears, Wines and Spirits review. Today I'm going to be reviewing this fella, Bautica. Uh, I'm sure I've reviewed it before, but we're in lager season, aren't we? You know, at the moment, and uh, it's good to uh, go, at least go over and try some lagers. Now this, Bautica 7 Premium ex Export Lager, with an alcohol content of 5.4%, making it one of the stronger lagers out there. Certainly amongst the uh, world lagers. Right, with a funny old cap. Ah, there we go. Different. Right. Ooh. Ah, this is well needed, I tell you. So, gold pour, white head, good carbonation lacing. And, you know, lagers should be like that. They should all be like that. On the nose, a nice, light, malty nose. Um, hay on the nose. Now, it says here. Um, oh, where has it gone? Can't see it now. Just click on that. Oh, cheers. So, mm, nice uh, taste to it. So it says here, the launch of the Baltica number no. 7 export brand was timed to the Goodwill Games in St. Petersburg in 1994. Since then, Baltica number no. 7 has steadily been the market leader at the top of the premium segment. The Baltica... Hashtag 7, number 7, is made from selective malt and rare hops and is distinguished for its special softness and fullness. The seven consumers are open to communication. They value everything that is aimed at development and know that they are capable of achieving more in life. Uh, and it goes on and on and on, Jesus me. Yeah. So purified drinking water, pale barley malt, malt extract, malting barley, hot products. So, ignore that. Really tingles the tongue, um, the mouth. And there's a slight sweetness to it that makes it different to other lagers. Quite smooth, with a, a bit that grabs your tongue at the end. Mm, not bad at all. Whew, and it's warm in here still. I ought to have done the review outside really. But uh, So yesterday I, I got home and at about 28 degrees yesterday. I did three beer reviews and didn't post any of them. And uh, <laughs> ended up in being... Been a little bit intoxicated. Um, what it is, it's that bloody apple wine there. I had some of that and uh, got a bit of a got a bit of a mild telling off on the wife for being a bit too intoxicated too early. So I'm trying to be good today. So when you see this review, I'll have, uh, probably tonight, I'll have posted probably four or five reviews in one day. But obviously not all being drank today. But uh, you'll notice that by different T-shirts. And obviously today, I'm doing the review from the beer room rather than um, from the garden. Or from the decking like I did yesterday. Ah. So, another bank holiday weekend. Uh, looking forward to it. Thinking of going to um, uh, Marks and Spencer's this weekend and doing a beer haul. And uh, just seeing what's new there. And um, what's interesting, there we go. I do like to see the wall um, with no gaps in. There we go, that's better. Although, inevitably, there is always going to be a gap somewhere because uh, otherwise, I won't, I won't be doing any reviews. They'll all be sitting there for months on end. 
so yeah um 5.4 percent the i mean out of the standard world lagers that's one of the strongest peroni's doppia molto is stronger and then obviously you've got that carling special brew you know them sort of things but um yeah, nine percent or something daft. Tenants super. If I could get those in single cans or single bottles, I would love to review them just 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 for review purposes. But I'm not paying silly money to to review something uh, which is pretty standard around. And uh, it is something where when we can start going in shops again and uh, all the queuing. Um, and without the awfulness that's part of that, then you know I would start going around more shops looking, trying to get more different beers. Uh, my birthday's coming up um, in June, June twenty fourth, so I'm looking to have uh, nearly a week off work. Well, uh, counting the weekend, three and a half days plus the weekend, five and a half days off, and, uh, and I intend to uh, enjoy it. Um, Obviously, it doesn't look like we're going to be out of this lockdown any any time soon, um, even at the end of June. Um, obviously, hopefully there'll be a vaccine comes out this year, and uh, we can all start going on holiday again. And uh, you watch the holiday companies ramp the prices up. Although you'd think that they would be sensible about it, because um, what will happen is people will just go on holiday in Britain, and. Um, Camping holidays, you know, uh, might be a big thing. And, uh, certainly interesting to see where, as a country, we move forward. I mean, obviously, a lot of people are working again there, uh, which, um, you know, props the country up a bit until everybody starts working again. And it's good to see companies doing what they can to adapt. Um, I look in Sherwood on the way home and there's businesses um, that would normally be restaurants opening in a way where it's a takeaway menu and I think that is clever you know it should be done uh, I think restaurants could do that I think restaurants could theoretically come to their door you order something they come to the door they give you the thing you then go and eat it in your car and then you put the knife and the, the plates back in a place where they can get it and um, yes it's not comfortable eating in your car it's not really the experience but um, but you can also have a, have a beer that way have your food and uh, you know and I also think outdoor eating is going to be massive this year um, Outdoor pubs, you know, you can see, and obviously taking into account social distancing, but um, I, you know, you can get through all this, and um, just being, it's just being sensible, isn't it? But anyway, back to the lager. So I've got to go in the beer room in a bit because I have moved all the wines and that into the and the red wine. It has bubbled up and it looks like a war zone in there, and obviously the heat has uh, really helped them um, uh, move on a bit and I'm hoping the two wines the rhubarb and ginger wine and the ginger wine that were a bit slow on fermentation I'm hoping the last two days of proper heat has moved them along to the stage that you know they get nearly finished which would be bloody great because I'm sick of waiting From my point of view as well, um, I'm going to break some pallets apart, uh, pretty much like I did here, and uh, make a unit for inside the gazebo, with the sole intention of doing brewing in there while it's, while it's mega hot, because this gets warm in here, that gets mega, and for something like um, um, wines and that that take a while to brew, that to me is a perfect place. It's a bit like an airing cupboard basically, but it's, it's even a bit warmer still. And it's certainly like having one of them heat pads around it, which is, yeah, that is a very interesting thing.
Oh, so back to this. Um, different tasting to other lagers. Um, there's that initial like a sweetness, but it has got a real different twang to it than than most other lagers. So I thought it initially when I first drank it, I thought to myself, is that just me? But um, on the initial mouthful, but no, 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 it's definitely got a different taste to it. Um, very hard to pinpoint the taste. It's that time of the year when you get really funny smells in the garden. I can smell it coming in there. Put me off. Obviously, this really should be chilled. This is, it's cool, but it's not chilled. And chilled does make a difference with lagers, as you can imagine. But yeah, refreshing, different. The strength is starting to come through now. I'm starting to feel that strength. Don't want to be feeling it too much, otherwise I might get another bollocking off the wife. Yeah, that'll please her no end. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, good flavour. Definitely, definitely a different taste. It's it's not obviously it's not a craft lager, but it's got taste in it that you just and it's very hard to pick out what actual taste they are. But uh, the malt has got a different taste to the malt than other lagers, and uh, for that it makes it interesting. And wow, I can properly feel the alcohol content now. It's certainly hitting home. And uh, five point four percent. You imagine that most lagers. Or anywhere from about 4.1 to at the most about 5.1 um, Rossini there that's a 5.1 as is Peroni and Budweiser Stella about 4.8 uh, Carling 4.1 4.2 something like that so as you can see it's quite a strong lager sweetness to it it's different different so gold pour good carbonation releasing white head on the nose typical light malt aroma hint of a sweetness in the aroma and that translates in the taste and it's definitely got a different twang to it than other lagers um, interesting lager very interesting on sale at most of the big supermarkets and the likes of home bargains to sell it as well at five then um, for me, yeah, that taste is just unique to this lager. I've not tasted that that kind of taste. Um, it's very hard to describe the taste as well, but it is it's, it's a nice taste. Um, out of five, then four point two out of five, I'll give that. Yeah, and that taste is really different. If you've never had this before, and your usual tipple is you know Peroni or whatever. Get yourself a bottle of it and have a taste and see what you think. It's different, very different to uh, other lagers. And very nice as it is. And that's all for this review. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing as always. Uh, we're over the 600 mark now, so it's nice. It's nice to see that it's got, the channel's going up. And, uh, and as always, stay safe. And uh, see you soon. Cheers.